Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today and this video is going to be a deep dive into how exactly one of my businesses generated over two million dollars in sales in a three month period and this isn't just going to be covering a specific ad platform like Google this is going to be giving you pointers and sort of an insight into most areas of the business and how they all contributed towards this total revenue all are things that you could potentially implement or improve in your business to start seeing better results but just before we jump into it if you are struggling with Google Ads or want a team to take them to the next level for you, then definitely get in touch with my Google Ads agency, AdRaw. I'll leave a link at the top of the description below. All you need to do is fill out a quick form if you want to work with us and we'll be sure to get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, the business in question here, like most of my recent case studies, is going to be my US brand. Now, we are currently in April 2024, but the best three-month period for this business, obviously, it was Q4 last year. So if we go 1st of October to the end of December, you can see here it generated just over $2 million in sales, over 15,000 orders and over a million visitors to the business as well. So an incredibly busy time of year. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you around eight to 10 different ways I essentially got and achieved this sort of revenue figure. Like I said at the start, all of these things are incredibly important to your business. They'll help your brand develop. They'll ensure your business runs smoothly in terms of logistics and things like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing I do wanna mention is Google Ads. Obviously, Google Ads being one of the primary sources of traffic for this brand now Google and Facebook are probably the two in fact they are definitely the two most used advertising platforms for this brand 90% of the ad spend comes from these two channels but Google particularly last year I scaled a lot with performance max campaigns I'm not going to dive too deep into the Google stuff today mainly because every other video on my channel is Google related you can literally check the previous three or four videos I've uploaded they go into detail about performance max campaigns standard shopping campaigns so if you want detailed guide on how I structure my Google ad account, how I optimize my campaigns, definitely go and check those out. But I just wanted to mention the fact that Google still is a massive part of this brand and it consistently proves to be an incredible sort of traffic source and, you know, source of bringing new customers into the business, but also bringing existing customers back as well. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is Facebook ads. Not something I talk about a lot on this channel, but it does account for a lot of the ad spend as well. Currently at this moment in time in April, the spend per day is about 50-50 between Google and Facebook. It's around $2,000 a day at the moment. In Q4 last year with this case study, Facebook did account for more of the ad spend than Google. It's more of a 70-30 split, I would say, leading in Facebook's favor, mainly because I found it a lot easier to scale up those budgets a lot quicker with Facebook when demand was extremely high over Black Friday. So if we go over to Facebook here, if we change this to Q4, you can see here we had a bunch of campaigns running and obviously I've turned a few of them off now. I've tried to sort of consolidate things and make the ad account a lot simpler. It just makes it a lot easier to manage and scale as well when you're outside of the busiest time of year, which is obviously Q4. You can see in this period, we spent just under half a million pounds in Q4 last year, just on Facebook. And like I said, it was around a 70-30 split for Google and Google spent around 300K in that period as well. Now, in terms of ROAS, the tracked ROAS here is two. Break even for this business is around a 1.4, 1.5. So it's still very profitable just on what is tracked. But we all know with iOS and cookies becoming more stricter and, you know, privacy laws and things like that it is really hard to get true accurate data so two rows this was probably more around a two and a half which at this scale is incredibly profitable and again just to reiterate this is all targeting us apart from a couple of campaigns like i mean this one here wasn't on in q4 but the other two countries i target with this business are australia and canada but they really only get a tiny share of the budget on google and facebook you can see cpms are very low for the us and a lot of you might wonder what types of ads i'm running for me personally stat Static image ads are working better. I've tried videos. For me, CPMs are just way too high on most of them. I have got winning video ads that are still running, but let's say I ran a test with five new image ads and five new video ads. Odds are all five of the image ads are probably going to outperform the video ads really. And to me, it comes down to CPM, but you know, each their own. That is sort of how everything is structured within my Facebook ad account. And I guess a point here to take away is if you're solely running Google ads, run Facebook as well. They go hand in hand incredibly well. Even if you just run you know a 20 30 dollar a day retargeting facebook ad to your customer list bringing existing customers back or a website visitor list and retargeting those visitors to come back and purchase from your store facebook is as good as it ever has been minus a few weeks this year it's been incredibly inconsistent and had a bunch of issues in 2024 but facebook is still an incredibly good platform to advertise your business on now a quick honorable mention to bing slash microsoft ads and pinterest ads i don't actually have pinterest up at the moment but if we just quick 
quickly look at Bing over here. Okay, yeah, this is Q4. You can see 2.8 rise in Q4. Not too much ad spend in comparison to Google, for example, but a very decent return on ad spend here, you can see. It's just another way you can capture your traffic in other areas. Essentially, if you're covering all areas of the internet and you're always going to be in front of your customers, you're increasing that likelihood of them coming back to your website. So if you haven't set up Microsoft or Bing ads, I've got a video on my channel exactly how to do it. Definitely do it. It's not something you're going to spend a fortune on each day. You may even start £10 a day, $10 a day, and that will still, over the first couple of months, will slowly bring you some results. And like I said, Pinterest as well, even now that spends around $50 a day. I never really touch that. That's more of a retargeting purpose and mainly because the quality of the traffic and the cold traffic on Pinterest never really is that high intent sort of purchasing customer. So I mainly use it as, you know, retargeting either existing customers or website visitors. Now, the next thing I want to mention is email marketing, which is absolutely vital for the growth of a brand, bringing those customers back to your business as repeat purchases, bringing back abandoned carts and things like that. And essentially, because I am so heavily involved in the marketing side of my businesses on Google and Facebook, I didn't have much time to properly develop the email marketing channel. So a good friend of mine owns his own agency. I outsourced this to him in October last year. So just as Q4 was getting started. And if we just go to custom here, we'll quickly see the results for that. October 1st to the end of December. You can see again, the 2 million revenue on this time period. And if we scroll down to campaign performance. So in this time period, campaigns generated me $117,000 in revenue. Email flows, 350K. So we're almost pushing 500K of that 2 million revenue just from email marketing. So almost 20% in total, which when you think about it at this scale, that is just insane. If you've not got this set up properly, I mean, if I hadn't had this set up properly before we introduced, you know, proper email marketing professionals to manage this for us, my percentage of revenue from email was about 8%. So going from that to 20 to 25% is such a huge increase and it makes such a huge difference. You can see a few campaigns, for example, the open rates are incredibly high, you know, upwards of 50% on some of them. Very good click through rate. And, you know, this one single email here generated $9,100. Again, nine and a half. So the message here is don't sleep on email marketing. It is a vital channel for any business, e commerce, or, you know, leads or any service based business. And the proof is right in front of you here. If, you, if you've not got time yourself, outsource it. It is, trust me, it is worth it. And I wish I'd done this two, three years ago. But we all make mistakes on not doing things soon enough. You know, it's a learning process for me as an owner of this business. Next up is something I want to talk about, and that is in October, I upgraded to Shopify Plus. A few reasons for doing this. One, at the time, Shopify forced the one-page checkout on all merchants, and the only way you could go back to the three-page checkout was to switch to Shopify Plus. Now, I noticed quite a dip in conversion rate when it was the one-page checkout. So one of the reasons I switched to Shopify Plus was so I could go back to the three-page checkout. And obviously, and typically, about a month after I signed up for this, they enabled it for all Shopify merchants to choose between one and three page checkout. But luckily that wasn't the only reason I switched over. Another reason is because I've got a UK side of my business, I'm now able to run both of these sites in one Shopify Plus plan. So it saves me paying two separate Shopify plans. It's all under one Shopify Plus sort of organization, which is really good. And another, and if not the main thing is credit card fees. Saving an extra 0.2% might not sound a lot, but just that saving on the transaction fees, it pays for itself just on that saving as well. And further down the line, a lot of Shopify features come either early to Shopify Plus. A lot of the better features are exclusive to Plus as well. I obviously was a bit apprehensive beforehand going from sort of, a, I think I was on the $250 a month plan because I paid annually. So going from that to $2,000 a month, which in October it's going up to $2,500 a month. Obviously a big jump, a bit scary, but I'm definitely glad I made the switch. Obviously it's not for every business, but if you're considering it, get in touch with Shopify because you know, you'll be able to speak to someone that'll be able to break down the numbers for you, which will make it a lot easier to understand if it's going to be feasible for your business. And one more thing with the Shopify Plus thing, it allows you to have upsells on the checkout page as well. I've also embedded customer reviews on the checkout page, which obviously increases conversion rate and also adding those upsells increases AOV as well. So I forgot to mention that very good feature. And again, that is a Shopify Plus exclusive feature. Speaking of upsells, if you're not using them, you're leaving money on the table. I use in cart upsells, I use product page upsells, I use checkout upsells with Shopify Plus, and also post purchase upsells. Now, just to clarify, I don't use one click upsells on the post purchase. And what they essentially are, it is a page a customer lands on after they've placed an order that is before the thank you page. Now, these do convert well, but 
if customers exit on that upsell page and don't reach the thank you page, you will face honestly tons of issues with conversion tracking because a conversion tracking event on Facebook or Google happens when a customer reaches the order thank you page. And if they're not reaching that order thank you page, despite placing an order and they're bouncing when they're on the upsell page, that order is not gonna track. So tracking is obviously harder than it ever has been. So adding that layer there just makes it even harder. So I make the most of upsells on the actual thank you page and they still convert really well. And just overall increasing that AOV is bringing your profit margins up because you're getting higher order values and not having to pay for another customer or anything like that. So again, the point here, if you're not using upsells or even cross sells, there are plenty of apps to do it. I recommend after sell for the checkout upsells and the post purchase upsells and then in cart upsells for the cart upsells and product page upsells. Now I focused a bit just before Q4 on conversion rate optimization, trying to bring that conversion rate up. It's obviously still not perfect, but one thing I did and a change that I immediately sort of noticed an increase was using swatches as my variant selector on my product page rather than a drop down selector with all my variants in a list. This is particularly good if you have products with a variety of colors because then the customer is going to see all the variants in one place, all the different colors. And instead of clicking a drop down then scrolling down and clicking a variant, they can simply click on each sort of color that's right in front of them. It just reduces the friction. It gives all the customers the option in one place. And it is obviously just one button click to select a variant rather than clicking on the drop down list, scrolling and then finding the correct variant. That alongside encouraging more customers to leave reviews and then obviously publishing them on your website also definitely helped with conversion rate. Now CRO conversion rate optimization can literally cover every aspect of your business and website from things like add to cart, button color, fonts and things like that. Obviously if you've got tens of thousands of visitors going through your site each month it's easier to measure these changes but I wouldn't worry too much about this if you've only got a few hundred or several thousand visitors a month. I'd then just focus more on getting your website fast, clearly laid out and then when you begin to scale you can begin to split testing things you know like the variant selector and swatches and things like that. I don't want this video to drag on too long so the final two things I want to mention is supply chain because we expected Q4 to be really you know busy last year we prepared lots and lots of stock some in US warehouses but most in warehouses in China simply because it obviously works out cheaper to ship products from China directly to the US and especially these days the delivery time is so so good if you've got a reputable sourcing agent and fulfillment agent so the moral here is don't scale too fast if you know you can't keep up with demand and fulfill those orders because you'll soon run into chargeback issues customer service complaints negative reviews which could all seriously have an effect on your business long term if you get too many chargebacks you'll get shut down by your payment providers if you get too many negative reviews on online platforms like Trustpilot that will seriously harm your conversion rate and overall trust so don't get greedy and make sure when you are scaling you keep up with demand because the last thing you want is thousands of unhappy customers and speaking of which the last point I want to cover is customer service. Outsourcing this to VAs is something that I again wish I did five years ago when I first sort of started my brand. Now luckily I have a great team but you will sometimes struggle to find the right people. You may go through quite a few sort of VAs that not that aren't necessarily very good. It's completely trial and error but once you build that secure and trustful team that you can just hand this customer service work over to you're going to improve the overall experience for your customers because they're getting quick and helpful support. But again if you've got good customer Customer support you're going to have low chargebacks low refund requests you're going to have better reviews on platforms again like Trustpilot and even on Facebook with your Facebook page feedback score you want to keep that high my brand is 4.1 and it has never really dropped below 4 for at least 2-3 years now and as many of you Facebook advertisers know if you go below a 2 you get CPMs that are just through the roof and it's just impossible to be profitable and if you go below a 1 you'll just get banned and I know I say it in a lot of my videos I think it's really important to focus on building a high quality and trusted brand and overall business and a proper business rather than just a cheap spammy sort of tacky quick Shopify dropshipping store it's never gonna last and I guess that's sort of why this particular brand is four or five years old now and it just keeps getting better every year so I hope that gives you a bit of insight into how the business is run and the different areas that are helping contribute towards the success of it I have had a fair few people sort of ask about a mentorship type thing it's not something that I'm offering sort of to the public yet but if you are interested in more one-on-one -on -one help and access to me then please do message me on instagram and we'll see if we can work something out or if you are looking for a google ads agency to manage and scale your ads for you click the ad raw link in the description but other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video